So again, we're listening to the demodulated version. So we'll see how high do I need to get the carrier for it to sound sensible again. So around 16 kilohertz is getting reasonable. And about 20 kilohertz were safe. So it's a little hard to think about what's happening in terms of these scope plots that we've been making. Another way to visualize what's going on is to look at this in the frequency domain. So something we learn in EC3084, which is the signals and systems or system signals, I forget which order we have it in, class at Georgia Tech, is that multiplying signals in the, freq in the time domain corresponds to shifting things around in the frequency domain. So with that in mind, let's turn the scope off here and let's pull up the uh, signal uh, sorry, the, um, the Fourier spectrum analyzer. So this is a frequency analyzer. And let me restart the contraptions here. And we can look at a couple of different things here. So I'm going to start looking at this. And um, let me try to remember what it is we're actually looking at. So let me press run. So what we're looking at with right now is the original musical signal. So I just turned off the uh, carrier so we can't hear the final output. But this is what the original contraptions actually uh, looks like, the original contraption song in the frequency domain. So you see it's, it's clustered around like zero, uh, pretty much around to 15 kilohertz. There's probably symbol information beyond that, but uh, YouTube does things audio sometimes. So notice there's a fairly steep cutoff there at around 1500. So anyway, that's what the contraptions sound like. And um, well, actually, that's what the contraptions look like. And now let's take a look at what the frequency modulated version of the contraptions look like. So I'm going to switch the channel that we're looking at here. And switch it so that we're actually going to be looking at the modulated version once I turn on the carrier. Again, let's now, instead of listening to the demodulated version, let's listen to this modulated version so it corresponds to what we've got going on right here. So there is a little bit of bleed through uh, in the current setup. It's the trimmers here are a little touchy, but you can see there's two bits of contraptions going on. One's a little bleed through that shouldn't be there, but the main thing is the contraptions you that we originally saw down at DC, you now see up here essentially at 20 kilohertz, and in a weird mirroring effect, there's also a copy of that frequency content that's happening below the carrier, and now as I change the carrier frequency, we can actually see the frequency content of the contraptions go up and down a little bit. So let's see, we've got this at 15 kilohertz now, so there's 15k. What I'm going to do is let me actually change the uh, ex horizontal extent here. There we go. So there's that 15 kilohertz. Here's up at 20. I'm also going to take uh, change the way this is averaging things so I can move things around a little faster. So there's 7 kilohertz, 6 kilohertz. Here's way up at 20 again. And you can see it actually move up and down. And what happens is at a low frequency, Some of that mirroring effect actually bleeds over and sort of so in what's called fold over. It's kind of like, you can imagine that if this is the original contraptions up here, 
and then you have this mirror down here. When I lower the frequency enough, these frequencies actually become negative, then fold over and turn into positive frequencies. So you can imagine you can get quite a bit of sonic chaos here. Of course, the main point of what we want to do is to actually be able to demodulate it, multiply it by that cosine again to get the original contraptions back. So I'm going to take what we're listening to and move it to the modulated output. And I'm also going to take our spectrum analyzer probe and move it so that we're actually looking at the modulated output. And so let me turn the area back on. So now, here is, here we've got essentially two bits going on. Here's a good example. So what we've got going on here is we've got uh, the carrier, I've set it to be around 10 kilohertz. And so when we modulate and then modulate again, in theory, we should get two, uh, the original back at DC, and also we should get a copy up at 20 kilohertz. There's a certain amount of DC bleed through at each stage here, so there's you also will see some content at 10 kilohertz that if I had these really properly trimmed would go away, but we'll be able to see this on the scope, and that's kind of cool. Spectrum analyzer, I should say. Of course it sounds crazy, but the main thing is you see the three copies. There's one down at DC, which is what we can actually hear. There's a 10 kilohertz version that's kind of bleeding through. And here's that 20 kilohertz copy. And that the theory will tell us that that 20 kilohertz copy should be there. Let me actually, let me do this. I'm going to unplug the speaker so I can look at the spectrogram at the same time. So again, there's DC, that is what we're mainly actually hearing. There's this 20 kilohertz copy that the theory tells us would be there uh, because we're using that 10 kilohertz car carrier. So there will be a copy up at 20. And that's something you can't typically hear. In a real system, you would usually use a low pass filter to filter that out. And just because of the way I have things trimmed right now, there's a bit bleeding through at 10 kilohertz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it back in and increase that carrier up and down. Whoa. Go David, okay. So craziness, very low carrier. As I increase, if I put this at four killer, oh, I'm gonna have to restart the song. So I'm gonna put this now at four kilohertz. And now we can really see that extra copy. So the demodulated version, it's got the copy down at DC that we're seeing. Uh, the 20 kilohertz we're seeing, again, is just because I don't have everything trimmed very well. And over here, at 40 kilohertz, that's twice the carrier. So that's what you would expect to see in the demodulated signal and something you'd normally have to filter. In this case, either the speaker or part of the speaker system or our ears are in fact doing that filtering for us. So that is the 615 AM version of amplitude modulation.